Hello and welcome to MC Explains, an investor education initiative brought to you by Money Control and Invesco Mutual Fund. We invest to make money or earn returns. But what happens when the returns you are observing are misleading? Misleading how? When we invest in a financial security or an asset, we wait for a time to get a return by selling that asset. Or if we are not selling, then we at least look at the market price for a notional return. For example, let's say you invested in a financial security with Rs 100 a few years ago and today it's worth Rs 200. You will say that you have doubled your investment or earned a 100% return. Your neighbor tells you that she invested in a financial security with Rs 100 and she was able to get Rs 150 and she feels bad as she has a lower return of 50%. This information is incomplete and can be misleading. Why? What we don't know is how long you were holding on to the asset before selling it. If you held it for 10 years, then your 100% return amounts to an annual return of 7.2%. On the other hand, Let's say your neighbor made a 50% return, but in 5 years. For your neighbor, the annual return comes to 8.4%, which is greater than yours. Which means, had she held on to the financial security for another 5 years, at this rate of return, her total return would be 125% or more than double. When you consider your investment return, you must always try to build in the time period for which you were invested to give you an accurate picture and also enable you to choose investment options amongst many. Now that we know to use annualized return in place of absolute point-to-point -point return, let's take this one step further. What happens when you invest in the same financial security more than once? Yes, just like a mutual fund systematic investment plan, some people do this with gold too. In effect, you're adding more quantity or units of the financial asset, but at different points in time. How can you calculate an accurate return? The first time when you invest, it will be the longest holding period and the return for those units will be different from the last units you bought. If you are investing regularly in the same asset, then you need to find a way of calculating returns by accounting for the cash flows. It can also happen that you redeem partially. Then as well, you cannot rely on simple point-to-point -point returns or even annualized returns to get an accurate picture. Here comes XIRR. XIRR is the short form of Extended Internal Rate of Return. It helps you assess the performance or return of your investment when multiple cash flows are involved across different periods of time. What you should understand is that the XIRR considers the timing and the amount of each cash flow in or out of your investment. This is the reason that XIRR is a useful tool when it comes to calculating your SIP return. Systematic investments help you spread out your buy-ins across time and as mentioned earlier, your SIP made in the first month will earn a return very different from your SIP made in the 10th month as the former has been invested for a longer duration. XIRR consolidates this variability in regular investments and gives you one figure as the return earned on your SIP investment over the time period you have remained invested. It is also useful if you have a SWP or systematic withdrawal plan running in a mutual fund scheme. SWP is a cash outflow from the fund and hence to that extent return is impacted. Thus XIRR is a precise way to understand how your mutual fund SIP or SWP are performing. You can even use this to compare across schemes or against the benchmark. The simplest way to calculate is using the Excel application. What you need is the dates and the amounts of the investment 
to be input alongside each other in two columns first. This will include both cash inflows to your investment and ca cash outflows or redemptions from your investments at the precise dates they were made. Remember that the cash outflow represents your investment and has to be added with a minus sign in front to specify it is an outflow. The opposite is done for your cash inflow or if there is no inflow but a notional end market value then that is represented with a plus sign. Step 2 is to enter XIRR as a formula, select the amounts column first and then the date column and then add a guess for a return. That can simply be the number 1. Hit enter and you should be able to calculate XIRR. Many aggregator, broking and distribution websites to showcase mutual fund performance will show you the XIRR if that is what you select. You don't always have to calculate it yourself. Whether you calculate it yourself or pull it out from a website, be sure to keep in mind that if you want a precise picture of what your investments are doing for you or how they are performing, be sure to look at the XIRR return instead of absolute or compounded annualized return. That's it for now. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next informative episode around mutual fund investing on MC Explains. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.